Hey y'all, it's Andrew Couch here, and in this How You Tuesday video, we're going to be going over some of the lesser known packages from the Ensemble Tidy Models package. But before I start this video, I wanted to say that uh, I have a link in the description below uh, for my Q&A video for my one year anniversary. So if you have any questions you want to ask me, uh, open up the link and submit me a question. It's coming up uh, pretty soon. I believe it's going to come up basically in less than a month. So I'm very excited to um, celebrate my one year anniversary with a Q&A video. So the main reason why I wanted to make a video kind of outlining the lesser known tidy models packages is because tidy models comes with more packages that uh, I think people aren't really aware about, especially since when you run tidy models um, using like the library function, it only loads up the, the core packages, right? So our sample, parsnip, recipes, yardstick, etc. But there are some very specialized smaller packages that can be pretty useful um, for your day-to-day -day work. Um, and I didn't want to make a vi individual video for each package because generally the packages that aren't the core uh, tidy models packages are very small and do not contain a, a, a lot of functions. So I figured I'd make like a high level overview of, you know, I think of the packages that I think would be pretty useful, um, given your situation. So the first kind of parts of the, uh, smaller packages is basically just models. Um, I think one criticism with Parsnip is that there's not a lot of models that are available for the Tidy Models framework. However, um, Tidy Models does actually include four packages um, that have a little bit more um, specific models that could be used. So not just your random forest, but um, some more useful things that are definitely more SATs based over machine learning focused. So the first package that I'm going to go over is the Poisson Reg package. And I think with this package name, it's basically about fitting Poisson models um, using tidy models. So if you're dealing with a lot of like count data uh, or interval data, um, the Poisson reg package is, pro is probably going to be pretty useful for you, um, especially if you understand like the like your uh, if you understand your data structure follows like a Poisson distribution you're trying to predict or gain some type of inference. Um, and as you can see, when you do the reference. Uh, there's only just one function, which is a Poisson reg, uh, which basically creates the Poisson model. And you have these two parameters. Um, obviously, you can fit it with different backends. So I think the most popular would be maybe like GLM or uh, Stan. Um, but uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, they come with different Poisson models too. So you can do like a zero inflated Poisson. Uh, I think you can even do a near zero inflated or something like that. But um, so it's basically a basic modeling um, package that you can do. Uh, if you want to fit some Poisson models. Um, and then the next package is actually the PLS mod. So the part, which is about like partially squares uh, models. And I really don't use this model, this package at all, uh, even, even in my work, but you know, you can just use the PLS function, some partially squares. Um, again, it, it could be very useful. Um, if you're dealing with like very wide data sets, stuff like that, but for me, since I, I'm really focused more on like a business problems, uh, you don't actually have to, you don't really see that many um, very wide and short data sets. Instead, uh, you know, you only have a decent, you only have like a few features with a large amount of samples um, that are pretty much have a near zero variance. Um, so the PLS mod package could be useful, I guess, if you're like in chemistry or in biostatistics or something like that. But for me, uh, I don't really use it a lot, but it is a very, straightforward package, uh, just like the entire tidy models framework, you know, you can use just the PLS function and just fit your model like you would do anywhere, anytime else. So you use your, I think, predictor proportion or num components. Um, so nothing too crazy, um, pretty easy. And I can see why they wouldn't include this in the, the core packages, but if you need to use it, uh, you don't have to change away from tidy models. You can just up, uh, you can just load in the PLS mod package. So another modeling framework is the rules package. So this is all about obviously rule based models. Um, again, I still don't, wouldn't use this too, too many times, but, um, one of the benefits of using these types of, I guess, packages is that, um, they can, um, you can use multiple predictions. So you can basically use the trees or the individual trees, or that you can even set the number of trees you want to use from an ensemble method, like, you know, bagging models. So, 
um, this is a pretty useful um, package if you want to do like multi predicts um, and stuff like that. But again, I usually just use random forests or maybe even a decision tree. So I don't really use it too much, but uh, it's pretty straightforward. You know, you can use your C5 model or Cubist model. And then you can also just do, um, you know, the, the randomly selected predictors using um, rules. So I kind of confused the the rules package with the baguette package, but the baguette package actually does a lot of ensembling, which I think out of all the packages I just showed is one of the more useful packages because uh, you can do all this uh, bagging via, I guess, bootstrap aggregation. Um, and this is very useful because instead of just training a random forest model, you can just do use a baguette package and it'll train up a little bit faster and the model will be a little bit smaller. So if you're trying to do a lot of deployment or doing a lot of testing, uh, this can be very useful. Um, and again, this it follows basically the same thing as a modeling framework. So you can do bagged uh, Mars models, bagged trees, um, stuff like that. Um, and then you can do like variable importance and you can do control bag. Um, I definitely would probably use bag tree probably the most because it's just essential, essentially just, you know, uh, fitting a bunch of um, decision tree models using cart. Um, and then uh, ensembling them by like um, through votes and stuff like that. Um, so once you do the bag tree, uh, you can do the multi prediction, I think, or something like that. You can, um, so you can do that and you can kind of get um, a good idea of like how you're training your models and stuff like that. So the last, um, I guess, model extension is the discrim package or for discriminant analysis models. And this is the one package that I probably use the most outside of um, the core tidy models. And I like to use this, um, especially when I'm doing a very like ad hoc analysis. Um, plus uh, you have access to a naive Bayes model, which I'm a huge fan of because I think naive Bayes models, although have very strict assumptions, um, are kind of fine actually in, the, in practice. And you can definitely violate these assumptions and get pretty good performance um, with pretty good speeds. So I, for me, I use the discrim package a lot, um, mostly to just use the naive Bayes model. But uh, you can obviously how there's like a flexible discriminant, flexible discriminant analysis, a linear discriminant models, um, all this type of stuff where uh, it's definitely pretty useful, um, especially if you want to do more like interpretive models and get some type of like analytic insight. Um, so yeah, these um, are definitely, like the discrim package and the baguette package are probably the most um, useful packages outside of the Parsnip core models. So another smaller package that I believe I've actually used in um, in my videos is just the embed package. I, I've, I think I've also used it with like, maybe it's actually with the, um, the, tight, the text recipes package, but embed package is about, about, all about like embeddings. Um, and for me, I really don't need to do a lot of like numerical embeddings. So not really trying to do a uh, like numerical embeddings or stuff like that, but mostly if I'm dealing with variables that have a lot of levels to it. So uh, in this case, they use like the the, the zip code example, um, where you know you might have when you're trying to predict a price, you may know that uh, yeah your your neighborhood uh, definitely has an effect on the price, but the levels are so large that you want to do some type of embeddings on it, so uh, you don't have to have as many terms into a, a model. So the embed package definitely uh, is pretty useful if you're dealing with like uh, highly sparse data or, or data with a lot of levels. Um, they do have um, some interesting, um, I guess, transformations. So they can do um, uh, weight of evidence and codings, feature hashing, um, layer embeddings using Keras or using a neural network, um, stuff like that. But I really, don't use it a lot. Um, if I were to use a function, I'd probably use step embed using the Keras uh, package just to make my own little embeddings from that. Um, I, I will say I don't have really a lot of experience doing like bins uh, for numeric uh, predictors, um, but that could be useful. Uh, I've never really seen it to be that useful, to be honest, but it is something that you could try out uh, if you're kind of tinkering with some models. Okay. And then finally, this is one package that I think probably has one of the most um, widely uh, useful uh, features, which is the uh, applicable or applicable package. So in this case, it's, it's kind of used for chemistry where they're talking about how 
you know, sometimes when you're, you're messing and experimenting with samples using a model, some of these samples uh, are not realistic to see, to see in the real life, right? So it's not a, a, like realistic uh, in, the, in, the, in the wild. So a lot of this time, a lot of these times is when you're making a model or something like that, uh, you might deal with some data sets that are just outliers due to like data quality or stuff like that, where you realistically know that, you know, even though my mom might predict a, a positive on the, on the sample, we know that this, this sample isn't actually real or realistic to even see. So we can actually kind of adjust and say like, okay, well maybe we're not that sure that um, this model should actually be outputting that. So this is a very useful package. Um, you can use it for both like, you know, um, classification problems um, or regression problems. It essentially uh, scores it and stuff like that by using like uh, some PCA and seeing how far it is from, uh, what is it, the components, right? Um, so it's pretty interesting to see um, where basically your samples are, are ending up. Uh, and if you are seeing like any new samples, uh, how, how close it is to your actual um, model training data. So again, this is a very uh, useful package. Uh, it's actually trying to do like, you know, if you're deploying a model and you're seeing some, you know, changes, some fluctuations in the prediction accuracy, um, that might be useful to kind of check your um, app applicability domain and see like, oh, maybe our, da our entire data is just fundamentally changed or maybe we were just using bad data um, to train a model. So those are the main packages that I thought were pretty interesting. Um, this is definitely not going to be a, um, this, 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 this video is going to be very dated, I'm sure in like three months, but a good way to check, um, whether there's any new packages that they're working on or just kind of be able to test it out yourself is to go on github.com dash tidy models and kind of just go through, um, the actual, uh, repos of each package. So with like recipes, you can kind of see like, where are they adding, you know, read the pull requests, see what new features they're going to be adding to it and stuff like that. So all nominal predictors and all numeric predictors, that would be a pretty interesting, um, recipe, uh, step. So you can just, you know, do your dummying it's on, on, on stuff like that. Um, so uh, again, there's, there's a lot of interesting things. I will say that, um, you can also see like new packages that they're building. So. In this case, when I was looking at it, they're, they're making a lantern package. So a tidy models, uh, framework using, um, the torch package. So it'd be kind of interesting to see like, uh, a tidy models implementation of neural networks. And what I would like to see is like a tidy models implementation of more complex, like multi-layered uh, neural networks. So deep learning with tidy models would be a very interesting thing to see. I'm not sure if this one will actually do it or not. Um, but a lot of this stuff is pretty interesting to look at. And it's always good to kind of just look at these repos, you know, read the pull requests, read the comments, read the issues, and just kind of see how, um, what people are thinking about, um, from different domains. So, uh, what's cool about it is, you know, people who are talking on, on the lantern, uh, repo, you know, they might, they're definitely going to be more focused on, on, on neural networks, but you can also see like what they're kind of thinking about when they're trying to design, uh, a package to fit, you know, as a whole data science needs and not just one specific need. So I know this was a pretty quick video. Um, I wanted to make a video basically on kind of the remaining, um, packages from tiny models. Um, but I am going to be, um, making a series on, you know, starting your projects, starting side project by yourself. Um, and we're going to basically do it from start to finish. So we're going to do like data, um, scraping, data cleaning, feature engineering, modeling and deployment. So this will probably be, um, coming up next week and I'll probably split up into like a three or four part series. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that, but in the meantime, I will see you guys next week and tidy on.